Do brace plate recovery rigs calcify connected to tap water? Uh, they sh yes, they can. They absolutely can. Now, the what helps us here is there, there's there's two things. One, we're only running water through it for a a short period of time. And now I live in an area where I've got some pretty hard water, uh, and I'm like. Here in my house, we live off of a, of, of a well, but we're not connected to uh, city or grid water, so we're, we're out here. We'll, we have a very high calcium uh, count or parts per million, whatever the case may be, uh, in, our, in our well water. And even then, it takes quite a bit of time of just slow growth buildup of that calcification before it even becomes noticeable, noticeable much less a problem. It's not a fast thing. So with using a brace plate for recovery as a subcooler, I'm assuming that's the direction you're going with that, then you're not moving that much water through it all the time. Now, one of the recommendations I've seen, and I see, uh, so Jason Johnson, if anybody knows him, uh, he has one of his own. He built his own brace plate subcooler. And one of his practices I've heard him talk about, and I didn't really do this for myself, I, did, I just didn't take the time to bother, but he likes to blow it out with some nitrogen when he's done and get all that water out of there, which most of the time it should help with a lot of that, uh, move a lot of that water and the deposits out. Because like the issue with my method of just kind of letting it dry out on its own, maybe shake it a little bit, um, is those heavy water deposits that stay in there well, the, the, the deposit gets left behind after the water evaporates. So if you wanted to mitigate that uh, using something like nitrogen to purge that heat exchanger out would be a very effective method of trying to extend your uh, heat exchanger's life.